Uh, we don't drink the water in the boat from the tank because we don't know where the tank is. <laughs> so our neighbours are just leaving right now. Got the fenders at the ready. It's a lot harder than parking a car. So we're just about to leave this marina now. This line here. Yeah. We ease. And then that will cause the, the bow of the boat to swing to port. Yeah. So that we can hopefully make an exit without having to do like a three point turn. Right. But if we don't make the turn, we will break, come back, and then uh, hopefully yeah. do it on the second try. Fenders all around just in case. So today we are off to Millet, which is this one in the distance here. We're going to try and drop sail probably past those two islands there. And uh, not that far today, probably what, I think it's 10 miles. So we're going to go around the harbour and drop an anchor today. Oh, it should be fine. It's a very sheltered uh, little harbour we're going to, natural harbour we're going to anchor in. It has a good seabed for anchoring. So it shouldn't be a problem. And it's nice and shallow, maybe 15 meters. So we've got plenty of chain we're gonna put out. There is a machine called a windlass, which is basically a winch. Uh, right. And you just let the chain up and down in 10 meter sections, counting out every 10 meters until you've got the right amount. So we just left uh, Korkula this morning, and now we're going to go and lay anchor in here. Right there. So how do you know if a ship's going to pass you? Basically, if it's going to hit you, the angle doesn't change. But if the angle is changing, then you know that you'll miss the boat. So, so here's another example. If that catamaran, the angle wasn't changing, then that means it's gaining on us, except if it was getting bigger. So as you can see here, the angle is changing, so it will go by the left of us. We're currently in about 10 meters deep of water, so we're probably going to lay anchor. You used to anchor before, John. I've had an explanation of it. There's a lot of salt there on that anchor. It works with a remote. Yeah, well, it works on the it works on the ship's motor because it won't work if the motor is off, if the engine is off. And on the chain, there are markers every 10 meters, and we have to. Um, let out enough chain till it strikes the bottom and then Garth starts to back up and we let out more chain so we actually so we don't want to dump all the chain all in the same spot then no because the chain has to lie along the bottom Down. I think this is the first 10 meters. Yep, second 10 meters. Yep, 30 meters. We're testing to see whether we're dragging. Okay, so it, the anchor actually stopped us moving, so that's a win. They're putting anchor down. Could this wind eventually push us to shore with this anchor? Oh well if it was extremely strong wind but you'd be talking kind of gale force wind then maybe but we have a good uh, seabed different kinds of seabed? seabeds uh, the same have different the properties yeah. for anchors so if it's rocky you can actually get your anchor trapped so sometimes you try and avoid the rocky spots and it's always marked on the charts the good places for anchors and this place this corner that we're in is marked 
and that corner where the boat in the distance is over there is also marked as a good anchor spot what happens if your anchor gets trapped you could just cut it well worst case scenario but normally you just uh, take in as much as you can and then you spin around try and pull it out from a different angle to free it up and that's it what what part of the boat is it connected to could it rip something or is it no. in structure somehow no it's very I mean it's very strong it has to be because it has to hold the boat very securely isn't it basically the weight of the chain dragging on the floor stopping us from moving? Not really. The weight of the chain, the, the chain is quite heavy. Mm. And the reason why you put out so much chain is it's not actually so much the anchor in the seabed, but rather the length of train train sitting on the seabed that holds. The anchor is like the backup. Kind of. Mm. I'm going to help you see if you bring it. So I'm just doing some working right now while my friends have went for a cycle around the island and their boat is parked just there with a red top. So when I took our dinghy boat, I took this waterproof backpack just in case uh, I dropped my backpack in the water, which would have really messed up my uh, remote working. We'll one boat like that and then basically we'll take it back over there. It takes about three or four minutes. Captain Gath, can I put my phone in your backpack for the... Just arriving back at the boat, still here, that catamaran, the sun sail just arrived. I don't know when it's this boat with the wind. We will bend the sun sail. They're not, any, they're not anywhere near us, it's okay. And they, just and they have the line. They've got a shell, so shoreline. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm having the red sail. Okay, be ready again. Put the things in the, the bag, the bags. timed you hope i think maybe a little bit premature no 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 nikos is here we have to just <laughs> you know <laughs> you can second law energy <laughs> energy must momentum must be conserved use your fingers to paddle oh we're gonna get there we're gonna get there there we go nikos power there we go perfect Woohoo! we made it back right. down back around the rope like this that holds it together, wrap it around three times. <laughs> okay, going to wrap up for today, folks. I'm going to grab a little shower here. A water set up here, and I've got my outdoor tap there, and that's the that's the lake there. So, up the hills as well, we can see. <laughs> 